Recap time. Sorry, I got a little down to plan. Alexa off. Um, if you haven't listened to Donda, you absolutely should. Uh, for those of you who listen to the podcast, uh, which we'll be recording a new episode today. So I know I know we've been uh, bad on that lately, but uh, but we'll be recording today. Um, we'll get into into some Donda talk today. At first, I didn't I didn't love it, but um, I've really really come around to it. So um, you know, short story long. You guys should give Donna a listen. Um, all right. We are in the week 10 recap. Um, uh, sponsored by Duncan. I don't know if it's sponsored by Duncan if I had to pay for it. Um, they actually made me pay for my coffee this morning. It's bullshit. Um, but, uh, yeah, whatever. All right. So week 10 recap of the book. First, let's talk about, you know, um, Beating the Jets is not a uh, accomplishment by any, you know, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, absolutely dismantling them is is uh, what felt good, and uh, especially after all the uh, the Mike White talk in our group chats and everything this week about how he's the you know the goat and you know what are we gonna do? You know, do we let White start the rest of the year? And I'm like, guys, come on! Like Zach Wilson's your future. He's your guy. Um, Mike White is, is a journeyman at best. Um, yes, he had a nice game against the Bengals. Congratulations. But, you know, every dog has its day. And um, I'm glad we could put him back in his place and, uh, you know, remind you guys that Zach Wilson's your future, not Mike White. Um, so that felt good. Uh, weird week of football again. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was funny, actually. Um, it, the AFC, especially, has been so crazy this year with, uh, you know, you have 12 teams that have five or more wins um, right now. But if you were to do a preseason prediction, what teams would you say would be winning all the divisions at the, at the beginning of the year? You would probably would have said Buffalo, Baltimore, Tennessee, and Kansas City. And right now, Buffalo, Baltimore... Tennessee and Kansas City are leading each of the divisions. So, um, you know, in the in the NFC, you have five good teams. And the way the Rams played last night, I'm not even sure if you have five. Um, but you have five really good teams. And then two other teams are going to be battling for those last two wild card spots. Uh, somebody's going to get them. But um, you would think that most likely they're not really going to be a threat to those top five teams. The, uh, what do you got? The Rams, Cardinals, Packers, Bucks, and... Um, and Cowboys, um, in whatever order you want to put them in. Uh, me personally, if I was placing money on an NFC team right now, I'd probably go Cowboys. Uh, it's not just a shout out to you, Tommy McGrath. I'd, I'd probably say they're they're the most complete team in the NFC. Um, any other random thoughts? Ted Lasso. If you guys haven't watched Ted Lasso, you should watch that. Christy and I just finished it, and um, I would die for that man. And uh, <laughs> and if um. If I don't know if I'd still I, I still don't know if I'd watch soccer if if their team really existed, but I definitely root for their team to win. So um watch Ted Lasso. It's on Apple TV and it's freaking hilarious. Um Roy Kent is my hero and I love that guy. And I'm gonna try to be more like him any chance I get. Alright, now to the actual recap. Um I had an absolutely pathetic showing. I scored 80 points this week. And somehow I won because I played somebody who only scored 67 points. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an extremely ugly game between myself and Rob Jessup. Um, I, I've come to, to, to terms with my team in this league. I, I won and I'm actually only um, I'm tied with Marcel right now for he's he's in the sixth seed. I'm in the seventh seed and we have the same record. So, you know, do I have a chance of making the playoffs in this league? I do. But if I do make the playoffs, am I going anywhere? Most likely not. Best thing I can hope for is that I make the playoffs and then, you know, in the wild card round, my team has a blow up and, um, you know, and, and somehow I get into the money there. Um, but this is not a, a great team. You know, my first round pick was was Derrick Henry and he's shelved. Um, my second round pick has been Antonio Gibson, who, even though he had a nice game yesterday uh, over the weekend, um, has been a disappointment. I was one pick away from getting Jonathan Taylor in the second round, and he went one pick before me. But the rest of my team is just it's trash. I mean, Evans is is meh. Marquise Brown's probably my most consistent performer. Uh, 
is what it is. So, uh, but I had a nice four and one fantasy weekend, so I will take it with my one loss only being in the dynasty league, which I'm trying to lose in anyway. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, 80 to 67, pathetic showing by both teams. Um, just my team was a little slightly less pathetic. I got 21 out of Gibson, 14 out of Evans. That's it. Those are my only double digit performers. Fortunately for me, uh, the only people who got in double digits for Rob was uh, Carr, Dan Arnold, and um, and his kicker. Um, so, yeah, again, the less said about that game, the better. Um, Marcel just mentioned uh, him and I are tied at 5-5 five and five right now. He had to win over JJ, a little uh, father on stepson crime there. Uh, 129 to 81. McCaffrey, Cooks had nice games for, for Marcel. Um, nobody showed up for JJ. He had one more point than I did. Um, yeah. He got a nice game out of Renfro. That's it. His defense gave him negative six. I'm surprised you started the Browns defense, JJ, being that, uh, you know, the Patriots fan that you are. Were you hoping that the Patriots offense would be trash? Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, McCaffrey, Cook, um, Keenan Allen, Adams, Ag starting Agnew. You're hilarious, Marcel. Um, all won, uh, won him that game. In our closest game of the week, Larry beat, uh, Marissa, 125 to 118. Uh, Devontae Smith, Mark Ingram having nice games for Larry. Uh, I think Larry's in second, well, actually, well, he's technically in third place, but he's got the second best record in the league right now. Um, Larry and Keough, uh, maybe be going, continue to go back and forth with that trophy the way it's been the last four seasons. Um, uh, Marissa got nice games out of her running backs with Taylor and, uh, Swift having nice games. Um, but, uh, her, you know, Herbert didn't show up. Although, listen, Matt Ryan scored zero for Larry and he still got the W. Um, but Herbert didn't really show up. And, um, uh, Judy Waddle. Myers, my Jacoby Myers scoring his first touchdown. We, where I was just teasing JJ on Saturday about uh Jacoby Myers never scoring a touchdown in his career, and then of course he catches one from Brian Hoyer at the end of the game. Um, but whatever. All right, so Larry on a three game, uh, yeah, on a three game winning streak, he's um, uh, one twenty five, one eighteen in our closest game of the week. Um, on to our. Let's see, Kyle and Tommy, and this is going to have our bench decision of the week. Uh, this was our second closest game at nine points. Uh, Kyle gets the win 106-97 to 97 against Tommy. Um, Kyle, obviously the two best players in fantasy football, and Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen. Um, got 20 out of Allen. A tough break with Allen. I mean, uh, Kyle obviously still got the win. Allen had two touchdowns, and the Bills, who never run the ball – had four rushing touchdowns, not and not Josh Allen rush touchdowns. Uh, uh, Matt Breida ran for a touchdown. Zach Moss ran for a touchdown. Devin Singletary ran for a touchdown. And Isaiah McKenzie, a wide receiver, ran for a touchdown on an end around. Um, it's just more of a jet sweep, but talking semantics. Um, uh, so Josh Allen's fantasy day could have been much bigger than it was, but he got twenty. She got uh, Kyle got twenty out of Zeke. Um, Aaron Jones is down. Do you have AJ Dillon? You do have AJ Dillon and you have Michael Carter. God damn, Kyle. Trade me like your half your bench because for nothing, because I don't have anything to trade and I need stuff. Um, all right. So, um, Diggs with 30 points. Diggs was, I believe the highest scoring non quarterback in the league. Um, we'll get to the highest scoring, uh, quarterback in the league, uh, in the next game. Um, Again, nine-point game here. Uh, Tommy did have the, the points on his bench to tie the game. Uh, I don't blame him, though. It's not like a decision that I think I would have made either. Um, had he started... Um, um, had he started uh, Tony Pollard over Javante Williams, he would have had a tie. And then if he'd started Dallas Goddard over uh, Dalton Schultz, he would have won the game. Um, would I necessarily have made those decisions? I probably would not have. Um, I think I would have started the same exact lineup that Tommy started. So, um, But had he done a different lineup, uh, he'd have been in a tie and or a win in that situation. 
um, Tommy Jessup and Keo. Uh, Keo right now, we'll, we'll talk about his team in a little bit. His team's rolling. He's on a six-game win streak, and he had the second highest score of the week at 141 to a 121 victory. Um, big games out of Daryl Williams, um, the running back from the Chiefs. And uh, CeeDee Lamb was a beast. Cup was Cooper Cup doing his normal thing. Uh, Bill's defense, you know, props to you for starting the best defense in football. And, um, uh, yeah. And then for Tommy, Tommy didn't have a bad game, 121. Uh, but, um, you know, Debo had a big game for him last night. Kelsey was decent. But, you know, Keo too much in that game. And then finally, Ken beating first place Rob Wilson, 155 to 109. And uh, the high score of the week was Patrick Mahomes with 36 points. I um, I was very worried in in Kyle's league. I ended up beating Dakota by less than two points, and he had Patrick Mahomes going on Sunday night. He had Cooper Cup last night, and uh, when when the Rams came out at the last play of the game and were in a four wide set instead of just taking a knee. I was like, oh, my God, I'm about to lose this game on, on a garbage time Cooper Cup catch. And uh, thankfully, uh, they ran the ball and, and let the clock run out. Otherwise, I would have been uh, I would have been in trouble there. But uh, Mahomes, monster game. Tyreek Hill, monster game. That's the stack you want. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, monster game. You're welcome. I traded him to you in Dynasty, Ken. Um, Bateman, another guy I traded to you on your bench, uh, putting in work. Um and then for Rob, uh, outside of the Cowboys defense and Justin Jefferson, nobody really showed up for him uh, in that game. Rob, do you have nobody on your bench? Like, you have two people on your bench? Did you just drop everybody? All right, well, whatever. Um, so that's that. All right, let's get on to the standings. And there's a couple things I want to address in these standings. So first, I'll just go through and, uh, and give you where everybody's at. Uh, right now, Keo's in first at eight and two, along with Rob Wilson in the second seed at eight and two. Larry's by himself in the third seed at seven and three. Uh, Ken and Tom Jessup are four and five at six and four, and then uh, Marcel's at five and five. He's in the sixth seed, so that's the cutoff line for the playoffs. Uh, I'm also at five and five. I'm in the seventh seed right now, um, and then you got at four and six. You got Tommy, Kyle, JJ. Marissa at uh, two and eight, and then Rob Jessup at one and nine. I want to talk about real quickly the way luck factors in and scheduling how it factors in. Right now, Keo's team, you can't dispute that at all. He's got the most points in the league by a good margin. I think the next closest team to Keo in points is actually Ken, who's got 121 less points than Keo. So Keo's got the most points. And you can't say he's lucky because he's got the most points against as well. Um, his team's his team's killing. He's on a six game win streak. He's got the most points in the league. Uh, now let's go to Rob Wilson, who's tied for first at eight and two. My team, which I just talked about how pathetic it is, has scored forty four more points than Rob Wilson's team. That's in first place. Um, let's see, uh, Rob's. Rob Jessup seems pretty bad, but Marissa, who's two and eight and second to last place, has five less points than Rob Wilson, who's in first place. So, literally, Marissa scored less than a point less a week than Rob Wilson, and is in last place where Rob Wilson is in first place. So that's why I just want to talk about the you know, the the way fantasy football is. Sometimes, sometimes it's luck. Sometimes it's good schedule. Now. Get to the playoffs and you never know what happens. Um, you know, like I said, my hope for my team is that I somehow sneak into that sixth seed. You know, Marcel loses a game, I win a game, get in there. And um, if I do get in, hopefully that wild card round, I, I play a team who has a bad week and my team has a good week and and I get lucky. But uh, of all my my teams in my leagues this year, um, I this this team I'm I'm not optimistic about uh my big money league i feel like i have good i have a good team there um it's underperformed but i feel like i have a good team my work league i feel like i have a good team yahoo um i'm i'm a little too dependent on cowboys but i feel like i have a good team this team is uh i, I don't love my chances don't love it <laughs> um 
yeah all right so uh that's that um we'll get into week 11 soon um you know it might be a big waiver week i think the trade i believe the trade deadline's the 24 so is that what this week no so next week will be the uh the trade deadline for our league so uh if you plan on uh making a final push for the playoffs um get to work all right um that's all i got uh yeah i think that's all i got so deuces